Hello and welcome to this tutorial video on installing games on Windows 11 Pro. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our web browser and navigate to the games web page. So the games web page is found here at msg.cam.iastate.edu forward slash games. So games, of course, stands for the General Atomic and Molecular Electronic Structure System games uh, package. So it's a package of various different codes, which can do various different calculations. So the web page should look something like this. Um, it's looked something like this for many years. Um, there is a little menu at the top where you can find uh, games information. You can find publications related to games, various group information, tutorials, and so on. So go to games, go to download, and then there'll be some information here on the source code distribution and the various different uh, philosophies and uh, capabilities of games. So it obviously includes the idea that this is available for free. And as a result, um, means that there is going to be a certain degree of lack of support maybe, but actually that's not what I find. I find a lot of support available in the community. So click here on the red one, obtaining games. Then it will ask you to sign a user license agreement. Now this is um, fundamental to securing your copy of games. Um, so you have to agree to the above terms. They're all pretty standard. It's kind of like, you won't copy this. You won't uh, assume liability. Uh, you have to cite if you um, publish anything um, that this, in fact, is a research group license. So, for example, uh, everyone within your research group will be able to use games without actually having to sign this user agreement. So that's kind of nice. So I agree to the above terms, then go through here. This is the registration system. So the first thing you'll be asked to do is put in an email address. Um, if you've already registered before, then it won't ask for any additional information. But if, for example, um, you haven't, um, so me at you.edu, um, you then indicate what you want. So this is for Microsoft Windows. We want a binary distribution. It's much easier um, if you're running Windows to do this. Um, you can, of course, get the source code and you can compile it yourself if you have any of the listed compilers. But um, in my experience, I've just used the pre-compiled and it's been fine. Um, so you submit the request. And if you haven't um, registered before, it will ask for additional information. Now, this is typically just um, for their database because some of their funding uh, depends on uh, listing where the users are from, how many users they have, and so on. Um, so just fill out that information. It's perfectly reasonable, um, I think, uh, considering the quality of software that you're going to obtain. So uh, once you send that off, um, you have to wait a little while. It can take up to a week. Um, if it takes more than that, then make sure that you've checked um, that it's not in your spam folder or whatever. Um, then you will get an email with a password and a username uh, and also a link to the downloads for this. So this is what the web page will look like. Whenever you go to download it, there will be um, the software which you've asked for, which will be um, this downloadable, executable um, binary for the games 64 on uh, Microsoft Windows. Um, so download that and also download this, which is the readme. So this is actually very useful. Um, and it gives, it gives some additional information on things like installing the Intel MPI and so on. So this is going to allow you to run the software in parallel. So the MPI is the multiple processing um, capability. So you're gonna click on this link here, this intel.ly forward slash 3V capital M QC capital D6. And that's going to bring you to the place where you're going to be able to download the MPI library. Uh, for Windows, so click on this one. If it's Windows you're using, which hopefully it is because that's what we're running on right now. Um, uh, you can use the online or offline installer, whichever you prefer. Um, and then um, once you've downloaded both of those, uh, we're going to download a third thing, which is going to be our WX Mac Mole plot. Um, so this is um, written by the software lead for games and uh, really is probably for me the best 
output visualizer for games output available right now, um, at least for free. Um, it also is probably the best input generator if you don't want to have to like write the input file yourself, but uh, it could be a little bit better on molecule building. Um, so that's why I use Avogadro for that. But nonetheless, still really, really nice. So anyway, we've downloaded that. I uh, download this as well. So we we'll go here, downloading WX Mac uh, more plots. So there's various different uh, executables and binaries. So for Mac OS X, Windows 64, Windows 32, Linux, and even the source code um, is available. So click here on the Windows binary, download that as well. Okay. So once we've downloaded all three, we go to our downloads folder or wherever it will be on your computer uh, and check those out. Um, so the first one we'll install is games. So there we go. So I'm going to install this. Um, of course, I have to redo the readme. Then I have to agree to the um, various different uh, disclaimers and license agreements. So there you go. So um, just click finish. We'll launch it later. Okay. So after that's been installed, I'm going to install the Intel uh, MPI. So click yes. Click continue. Uh, so it's going to download some stuff. Uh, preparing the installer. And then it will install the one API for MPI in. So we have to, of course, accept the license agreement. Um, continue. I do not consent to the collection of my information. That's just my general preference. Um, so that's going to install everything. Usually pretty quick, um, at least on my system. And then finish. Okay. So those are both then installed. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to find um, our game 64. So it's going to be in what a user, um, local disk users. Then it's going to be in public game 64. There we go. Okay. So this is our folder for games. It's been created in public um, for all users of the computer. Um, so uh, this is not going, this is a command line only program. So double clicking this will actually do nothing. Um, the game uh, application says here, but what you actually have to do is you have to open up a command prompt. Luckily there's a shortcut in the folder. So double click that it will bring us up to this point here. So the first thing that we typically want to do is to check that the software actually works. So what we'll do is we will, um, first of all, get uh, the version number. So get version names.bat. So this will check all of the available games binaries and version names. Then after that, we're going to do run all bat with the version name that we got from this command here. And then we're going to run the number of CPUs. We'll run in serial first, and then we'll do it again in parallel. So press any key to continue. I press any key. So get version names, not bad. So there you go. We got the version name 2022.r2.intel. This is our version name here. Okay. Um, so we're going to do run all. Um, then the it asks for the version name. So it's 2022.r2.intel. Number of CPUs is going to be one because it's going to be a serial execution. Okay. So it's going to run through all of the test, so it's going running exam one and so on all the way down, um, running two, and it will produce output files here in the folder like this. So I'm going to let this run for a little while and we'll come back whenever it's finished. Okay, so now that all of those uh, have been completed, uh, it's a good opportunity to just um, take a look at each one individually and make sure that they have been run. Well, maybe not all of them, but a few of them. So if you look at open up the first one, um, we can search normally. Uh, so we can see the execution of games terminated normally at this time. So that's perfect. That's what we want to see. So check another few, uh, check number 20 and 19. So normally, you can see there it's also terminated normally. And then let's check another one. Let's check number 49. And that is also executed normally. So it means um, we can assume that most of the serial checks were successful. So we now want to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be checking um, whether or not uh, the parallel installation, so the MPI installation, has in fact worked. But we'll have to clean up first. So we'll have to clean run all files. So that will... Um, 
remove all of those, we check the directory, there's nothing there anymore. At least there's no log files anymore. So basically run the same uh, command they run all that bad, but change the last one, which is the number of CPUs, we change it to four. Um, and then hit enter, and then just wait for those to run. So not all of them will be run because some of them are serial only, but uh, those that are parallel can be run. Okay, so again, we'll just let those run and then we'll come back whenever it's finished. Okay, so now that all of those have finished running, we can also do the same thing. We'll check a couple. So we'll check the first one. Did it finish normally? Yes, it did. Okay. Check number eight, same thing. Did it finish normally? Yes, it did. Check one of the later ones, 44. Just really checking at random here. Yep, that also finished normally. So we can kind of assume then that everything is going as intended and that we have uh, successfully installed games. Um, let's just clean up that directory uh, in the same way that we cleaned it up before, just because we don't really need those outputs. Um, there is documentation on what each one of those outputs does, but um, for now, it's just going to kind of, I don't know, uh, fill up our directory with things that are not maybe necessarily that interesting to us right now. They were designed to check the capabilities of games, and now they've done that. Uh, we thank them for their service. So uh, we're going to then try and actually run uh, a calculation in games, uh, maybe a geometry optimization. So for that, um, we're going to want to build an input file and that input file can be built in wxmacmolplot or as I'm going to show you now, I'm going to build it in Avogadro. I'm just going to build a single methane molecule. So there we go. So one carbon, four hydrogens, methane. So I'm going to do a quick geometry optimization here and then I'm going to build an input file. So the input file I will build using um, the games input file generator. So that again, that's in extensions, then go down to games and then input generator. Uh, you'll see there's also another games UK here. That's not the one that we have just installed. The one that we have installed is just games or games US if you want to be very particular. So games input generator. Let's do a geometry optimization since that's one of the most uh, widely used calculations. We'll just stick with an RHF, but we could change it to uh, DFT. So in B3lib, so that has changed down here and then we can change our various different um, basis sets. So let's say we have a 631GD, um, so one diffuse orbital. Um, We'll keep it in the gas phase. It's a singlet, it's a neutral molecule, it is methane. There are two tabs here. There's the basic setup and the advanced setup. The advanced setup has a few more options, but not a ton. Um, so we look at the basic setup there and we um, can continue along with that. So um, even, even just now we could run this and it would probably give us quite a nice result. So we click generate here to write that input file. So we'll call that methane.imp, um, standing for input. So then let's go over to our uh, games directory in the command line, and then we're going to run games.bat. Then we're going to give it the input file name, which is methane.imp. Then we're going to specify the version, which is 2022.r2.intel. In my case, your system may differ. And then I'm going to run it with six scores, a little overkill for this calculation, but still. And then I'm going to write the standard output to methane.log and then hit enter to run that. And hopefully everything will go swimmingly. Um, there we go. So let's just have a look in our games directory and make sure that everything worked as intended. So there's methane.log. Let's check for normally, did it, yeah, well, let's check. Equilibrium first, was the equilibrium geometry located? It was in fact located as we can see here. And then did games finish normally? Games did finish normally. Okay, perfect. It took a total of what, one second. Very good. Um, 
the next thing that we want to do is uh, we want to actually visualize these results, maybe have a look at the HOMO and LUMO orbitals and so on. So that can be done relatively straightforwardly using WX Mac mole plot. So we'll install that. So it can also be done in Avogadro, but sometimes it doesn't work if you have a particularly large molecule. So WX Mac mole plot uh, is my preferred option for that. So I'm going to install it just for me in this case, because I'm the primary and almost only user of this computer. Um, so we're going to install it. Um, there you go. So it's been installed. So I'm going to open WX Mac mole plot like that um, by Brett Bode, who is the software lead for games. Then we've opened up methane. Um, we can see that this is frame four of four. So that's going to be only, it only took four steps to find the equilibrium geometry in this case. I mean, it's a very simple molecule. We already did some basic optimization. So um, on the right-hand side, we can scroll through the different frames from the initial to the final, not really seeing a huge difference there. If you press, uh, if you go to view, you can animate the frames with control F you might be seeing some things change there a little bit. Then, um, so once we're in frame four, I'm just going to look at the energy plot. And so the energy plot shows a general decrease in the energy over time. It sees a slight increase and then decrease again. And so it's fine the equilibrium geometry quite well after only four uh, attempts. So then the next thing would be to actually look at the uh, orbitals, as I suggested. So we click subwindow, surfaces, 3D orbital, hit OK. Then we can see on the bottom left here the orbitals um, that have been uh, determined for this molecule. These are the molecular orbitals, there are 15 in total. Um, so the blue one here, orbital number five, is highlighted as being the highest occupied molecular orbital. You can also see it's got a, a negative energy. Then the next one has a positive energy um, indicating this is the HOMO and LUMO in this instance. And then we can draw that out. So um, here you go, you can see that's the, the HOMO orbital of this molecule somewhat along the Z axis there. Okay, um, it's not particularly pretty right now. Um, we can change that. Um, by changing the number of grid points. So the, the, the more grid points we have, the smoother it's going to be. So I update that. And you can see that it's increased greatly the number of grid points. I'm still not quite sure why it does that, but um, so it, the grid size will adjust the volume over which the grid is computed so we can increase the volume. Um, there you go. So we need to increase the number of grid points as we increase the volume as well. Then uh, changing the contour size will also change things. Um, so if we change that to 0.2, then update, you can see how this has gotten smaller. So the smaller the contour size, generally the larger the orbital is going to be. There we go. Um, you can make it solid, you can smooth it, and we can see like that. So uh, you can just, depending on what your need case is, you can change the, the way that these look. Um, and how you can utilize them. So that was just a very quick introduction to geometry optimizations. Check out other videos on my channel for detailed information on geometry optimizations. Um, so now you've hopefully successfully installed games um, as well as MPI and the the viewer, the, the WX Mac mole plot. Um, so thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and watch out for future videos by clicking that bell and the notifications will come directly to you. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.